On a brutally cold February evening in 1866, the woman who would become known as Mary Baker Eddy had a serious fall on the ice in Lynn, Massachusetts. Knocked unconscious with severe injuries, she was attended to by neighbors. Her minister, like others around her, assumed that this frail 44-year-old woman was dying and told her so. It looked like the final blow in a life marked by struggle, disappointment, and loss. At least that's how it appeared on the outside. But on the inside, a deep yearning had been pushing her for years to find answers to troubling life issues. She questioned how people thought about science, theology, and medicine. She sought solutions to the problems of human suffering. Now, at this critical crossroads in this emergency, when all seemed lost, she made a discovery that saved her and to which she dedicated her life. She was on the threshold of a radically new experience. In America at this time, as a woman in her 40s, Eddie had already reached the average life expectancy, yet her career was just beginning. Out of obscurity, she rose to become a source of fascination, controversy, and inspiration as a best-selling author, religious leader, and healer. Her work and ideas were challenging and changing how people thought about their world, their beliefs, and their health. Born in 1821, Mary Baker was the youngest child of a New Hampshire farming family. Bright, but often struggling with illness, she would spend many years investigating different treatments and ideas, trying to find better health, as well as a more satisfying understanding of life. She delved into new philosophies and practices, such as homeopathy, and sought the care of a magnetic healer. Though sometimes helpful, none of these pursuits brought lasting answers. She endured profound trials and losses, the death of her first husband when she was six months pregnant, a difficult birth that severely incapacitated her and the eventual loss of her young son to foster care, the death of other cherished family members, including her mother, and her brother Albert, who was a kindred spirit with a similar love of learning. Her second husband, Daniel Patterson, deserted her, and she had to move repeatedly from boarding house to boarding house. Now, after her fall on the ice, with a death prognosis hanging over her, Eddie turned to her Bible, as she had many times before in her life. In reading a gospel account of one of Jesus' healings, she gained an insight about spirituality and health that transformed her. It uplifted her physically and inspired her. Eddie committed herself to understanding what had restored her to health. She spent three years studying the Bible, compiling reams and reams of notes. Based on her spiritual discoveries, she started a successful healing practice. A small group of students and followers began to form. She worked tirelessly at giving voice to her findings, developing her ideas in writing and in teaching manuscripts. Mary Baker Eddy was convinced from her Bible study and experience healing others that everyone has a divine nature. For Eddie, there existed an unbroken connection between God and humanity, in which men and women have a spiritual identity as the image and likeness of God. She saw prayer as active and dynamic, revealing the divine to human perception, and bringing about healing and personal transformation. In 1875, she published the first edition of Science and Health, a landmark work on practical spirituality. The Bible was always central to science and health, and in an 1883 revision, she added with key to the scriptures to the title. 
This work has become widely available as a textbook on healing, impacting thousands upon thousands of lives and gaining a broad and devoted readership. Eddy continually revised Science and Health to explain more clearly this discovery and system of healing, which she felt could be practiced by anyone who applied it with understanding and integrity. She named her discovery Christian Science because it was based on the healings and teachings of Christ Jesus and on repeatable and provable principles. Eddy established a new religious denomination and church, the First Church of Christ Scientist, in order to nurture the fledgling but growing Christian science movement. In her marriage to Asa Gilbert Eddy in 1877, she found a devoted companion. He was deeply committed to her ideas and cause, helping in legal and business dealings and contributing to the development of the Christian Science Church. Heartbroken when he died in 1882, Mrs. Eddy persevered in the work they had shared. Eddy became a popular but controversial speaker. As her ideas spread and her followers grew, the public took increasing notice. By the turn of the century, she was by many counts the most famous woman in America, her every action scrutinized by the press. In a time when women were generally excluded from leadership positions, Mary Baker Eddy was overseeing a burgeoning organization with its various legal, business, educational, as well as religious activities. Her church was spreading throughout the United States and gaining an international presence, as was her book, Science and Health. Along with a handful of other pioneering women of her generation, women such as Clara Barton, Susan B. Anthony, and Florence Nightingale, Mary Baker Eddy remained purposeful and productive over a long life. Although at each stage of her experience, Eddy faced daunting obstacles, she never stopped working to overcome them. In her 87th year, she decided to provide an alternative to the unethical yellow journalism of the day, which had often targeted her. She took on the media establishment and founded the Christian Science Monitor and gave it the mission to injure no man but to bless all mankind. On the web and in print, the Monitor continues today as one of the world's most respected international news sources, probing the world's challenges while illuminating solutions and progress. Mary Baker Eddy committed her writings to honest seekers for truth. That commitment continues today in the publication she established. The healing activity of Christian science practitioners and nurses who based their work on her writings. The church she helped organize. And through countless other channels, such as Christian science reading rooms. Since opening in 2002, the Mary Baker Eddy Library in Boston, Massachusetts has been a destination for visitors who wish to learn more about her life and the themes of discovery, exploration, and transformation, which are so much a part of her story. The library answers hundreds of queries relating to her on a weekly basis from all over the globe. In Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, Mary Baker Eddy writes, Thus the dawn of ideas goes on, forming each successive stage of progress. Her life work and legacy are very much a part of our world.